Hello guys, I haven't been posting for some time now, and um, my dad's in the ICU, hopefully he gets better, he's doing better than before, but hopefully we, we leave the hospital, so in the meantime I wanted to do a quick video, I did do a video about um, my website before, but I didn't really like it, so I'm going to do it all over again, so this is how my homepage looks like. Um, this is what my gallery looks like. Um, I have few videos and few pictures of all four of my birds. When you click budget information, we have something like this. You can click the links below um, and it will redire redirect you to a different page. Um, that's my very pretty illustration of my birds. I had a friend named Megan who did it for me. It was a commissioned work. Um, if you guys want her to do a work uh, for you, you could go to my Instagram page, scroll down, find this picture, and I have her tag and also her username, and you could DM her and see if she's willing to do new work. So, yeah. So, it's basically about us. Just a brief overview. Uh, meet the flock. Um all four of my birds, Kiwi, which is a female, Limon, which is a male, Snowy, female, and then Edward is a male. Um, so yeah, I will get about the bird dynamics or after adding a new bird, how dynamics could change. But so far, it's slowly changing, but I will wait a year to really have an idea about, uh, about the dynamics of my birds. It's kind of confusing because it keeps keeps changing but for the most part I think after a year since Edward is a new addition after a year I will kind of have an idea on what's on what's going on so our cage old cage I like it it was just small I had three birds at the time so I upgraded to the Vision Hagen cage it's the MO2 uh, the reason why I didn't get the uh, larger one, it's just going to be way too heavy simply because the vision cage, they don't have a bottom tray. So I'm actually glad I didn't get a bigger one because in my case, the medium size, it's actually pretty heavy. Um, I lift it to clean the bottom. I also take my braids outside for vitamin D uh, and it, carrying it, it, it's pretty heavy. So. I prefer the medium size and my birds are out most of the time so it doesn't really matter. First few days, um, I really like this page. I think it's one of my more informative pages among all of them, um, especially the first flight and a scared bird. Um, that's actually Snowy with um, a blood stain. She was at the vet after two days of having her. She had diarrhea but anyway, long story short. I would highly suggest new bird owners to have a look at this page. Male or female. Oh, look how pretty Edward looks. Male or female. Um, For me, it doesn't really matter. It just happens to be that Kiwi, my female, is the more tame one. So, you know, it's a personal preference. I don't really see a difference. Uh, so, yeah, you could have a look there. Age of your budgie. There are few physical characteristics, but at some point you might not be able to tell. So after a year, you, you can't really tell how old your bird's going to be. Um, an instance is um, uh, Snowy. Snowy, she doesn't have an iris ring. If someone were to just look at her, they would assume that she's a baby or she's uh, a lot younger than a year. So, um, a lot of the time, people who do breed their birds, they tend to wait. So, if they don't know their age, they wait a year and then they breed their birds. But, yeah, you know, you have a look if you're kind of confused about how old your bird might be. I did do a YouTube video on this, which I think I did a YouTube video on most topics, on the, although not all, but why toys are important there are different types of toys if you can't afford toys you could always do toys on your own there are a few facebook pages um that kind of people join and they kind of give inspiration to one another 
So you could have a look at those Facebook pages to see. There are groups and most of them are private. So you, you're going to have to join and wait to be accepted to the group. But have a look at that if you want to invest in making your toys on your own. Plus they save a lot of money. Um, importance of purchase. There's different kinds. Um, I suggest you guys have a look at all of them and also purchase to avoid sandpaper. But yeah, have a look on this page as well. Understanding molting. Um, it could get confusing at first. Um, juvenile molt of molt is different than a regular molt. Um, so, you know. You're going to have to really understand how old your bird is, kind of. If their molt is going on forever, pro most likely they are going through a juvenile molt. Uh, if they're having a very typical molt, it will be a lot shorter. It also depends how often your bird molts. Some birds molt as much as, like, <coughs> excuse me, but they can molt as much as, <coughs> oh my god, sorry about that. Uh, they can molt as much as three to four times in a year, but um, some birds, such as kiwi, they will molt a lot less. So that's that page, diet and nutrition, a very important page. Um, water, vegetables, pellets, seeds, grains and legumes, fruits, spices and herbs. All very essential. Um, have a look at them. Some people with pellets, they're not very... You know, some bird owners, they don't want to give it to their birds. Fair enough. Um, I like providing my birds with pellets. Um, just try getting one that is not colored. Um, and try the best one out there. I'm going to be honest. Tops is one of the best, best ones out there. And then from there, I would think Harrison's would probably be the second best. Rowdy Bush is not a bad pellet. I do use Rowdy Bush. Um, tops and Harrison's my birds just didn't like them I've tried so many times they just wouldn't try them rowdy bush it is um, not colored it's fairly good my birds seem to like it so I stick with that getting your budgies to eat vegetables quite difficult I have few examples of what you could offer them um, but uh, have a look on this page um, the best way is quite honestly to hang them or just mix them with their seeds so getting budgies to eat pellets like I mentioned some people don't like pellets which I was trying my best not to be very biased so I gave the advantages I also gave the disadvantages so it's it's you're gonna really have to decide on your own the pellets could be too dry for the digestive system. Uh, co uh, colored pellets could also be not the best ones. So, you know, you're going to really have to look. Some pellets out there, they are fruit dyed or they have a bit more sugar. Um, if you do want to go with that kind of option, you might want to feed a lot less seeds. But you're going to really have to see which, uh, which scenario fits best for you. So, these are examples that I... Or a list that I wrote that might be able to help you to offer your birds how to eat pellets. If you click diet and nutrition and click budget supplement, um, it will basically talk about the different types of supplements that you could offer to your bird. Um, I, I, I'll, I actually really like offering bee pollen, but have a look at that page as well. If that's something you want to offer to your birds. If you click health monitoring, you end up with this page. Um, yeah, I have some people on my YouTube page commenting down below telling me that their bird is sick. Unfortunately, there's absolutely nothing that I could do. Like, absolutely nothing. I'm just going to be honest. The only advice I could give is keeping them warm until you take them to the vet. Simply because budgies cannot regulate their temperature. But aside from that, I can't do anything. Like, I'm not a vet. I can't really help. Um, some birds have cancer or tumors and there are a few uh, treatment options but that's also um, that doesn't mean you can't take them to the vet but sometimes the vets won't operate on birds with tumors or cancers and there are a few herbal stuff or just few plants that you could give to them in the meantime to slightly alleviate, alleviate their pain but for the most part 
as an online person who posts videos on Instagram and also YouTube, I can't help. I'm just going to be bluntly honest with everyone over here. I would love to. If I lived anywhere near you, I would even offer to pay for your vet visits, but there's just really nothing I could do. Just keep them warm. If that's something that concerns you, keep them warm. Call your vet. Let them know it's an emergency. Some people say that they don't have an avian vet, um, which I will talk to you in a few minutes. But This page is about feather clipping, uh, to clip or not to clip, advantages, advantages of full flight, which there are advantages. Uh, advantages of clipping. I know that's uh, for some people, they don't want to do it. Fair enough. I don't do it. Um, I did do it before. There was a reason behind that. I don't do it now. It was only a one-time thing. Edward was the only bird that came clipped, which he was professionally clipped. I didn't know he was clipped until he started flying. <laughs> but aside from that, all my birds were clipped once. Um, as that's just a personal preference it was something that I decided with my vet so you know just listen to your reasoning be honest with yourself um clipping your bird does not mean that your bird's gonna pretty much be tamer it might look like that because they can't fly but then that doesn't mean they're tame all my birds are tame I don't have them clipped so there you go This page is about dangers and hazards, um, things to look out for, such as toxic fumes, temperature changes and drafts, plants, branches, and other dangerous stuff to look out for. I do have a link over here if that's, um, you know, I use, as you can see over here in this picture, I use natural branches. I actually very, very like them. Uh, I clean my branches. I take care of them. Um, but if you want to see if the type of bra branch you're using is safe, just click this link below um, and you'll be able to um, have a few ideas on how to keep your bird safe. Um, certain branches are not safe, so you have to be careful with that. Preparing for winter. This is mainly for my Canadian friends or people who live at very cold climates. I live at a very cold climate, so yeah, have a look at that. I did lose one time my electricity in 2014 for seven days. I'm not kidding you, exactly seven days. Welcome to Canada, but so, you know, that could be very dangerous. Um, if in a situation where you're unable to keep your birds warm or you're just very worried you could call your avian vet or any vet in general they will if they do have electricity or your humane society they might be able to house them maybe with um then you might need to pay them but they might be able to house them or, um, and keep them warm for the night or two so just keep an eye on that weighing your budgie Something quite surprisingly a lot of people don't do. Um, I know people are going to ask me, how much should budgies weigh? It's going to depend. Um, my vet legs between 30 to 35 grams. That's um, Australian budgies, but then some budgies will differ. For instance, um, Kiwi is also an Australian budgie, but she weighs 41 grams. But most of her weight is actually muscle. So, again, it's going to differ. And then I have Edward, who I recently weighed. Edward is still growing. He weighed up, up to 43 grams. Now, Edward is going to easily go up to the 50 gram scale, um, simply because he is an English budgie. Actually, he's quite small. Some English budgies could even be up to 70 grams, even like 75 grams. I've heard few that are 80 grams. The best way to determine if your bird is at an unhealthy weight is to actually take them to the vet they will be able to tell by their composition and stuff so for the most part I would say depending on your bird it will differ but for the most part at least with my vet they like them to be between 30 to 35 grams so yeah what's wrong with a plump budgie most likely they are they are on a seed diet cute but not healthy so yeah 
monitoring the weight of your budget. I basically talk a little bit about why that's important. Broken blood feathers. Um, happened to me before, only twice, once with Limon, took him to the vet. The shaft that was inside him was very small. I couldn't pull it out. With Edward, it happened very early in the morning. Um, I had to pull it out. Luckily, um, he had a bigger piece. Uh, a bigger piece of the shaft inside him so I was able to pull it out uh, so I did write this in most cases I actually do prefer everyone going to the vet they do have proper tools to do it you could just use tweezers and stuff make sure you clean the area that's also very important because if you don't clean the area the blood is going to make it kind of slimy and your tweezers might just kind of slide off uh, you don't want to stress them quite often so it's just basically wipe it down a bit, try pulling it out. Um, it could be a bit bloody. In my case, I had to do it quite quickly. And with Edward, his bleeding did not stop. It was 7 o'clock in the morning. My vet opened at 9 o'clock, so that didn't help. So I did pull it out. But for the most part, I actually do suggest people to take it to the vet. They do have these proper tools for it. Um, they also will be able to tell why it broke by looking at the feather itself. If you click on avian vet examination, you will land on this page. Hello, cute lemon. Uh, these are a few signs why you might want to be taking your bird to the avian vet. They are important stuff, just keep an eye out. Um, budget behavior, you land on this page. Um, I give a quick overview on what we're going to be talking about. So, yeah, this page is very simple. Body language. If we go to body language, I have few um, few examples on what kind of um, body language budgies exhibit, such as a relaxed budgie, big grinding, wing stretching, feather shaking, budgie, yawning budgie, curious budgie, cooling off, or nibbling feet. So, very simple. It's a very simple thing most people should know. Another very important page, something I very like, affection. Uh, oh, this is about budgie rituals, by the way. Affection. Budgies do show affection not only to their birds that are in the same cage, like birds show to one another, but they will also show to their um, human friend. So, yeah, people assume that once they have a friend, they're not going to show any affection whatsoever. That's not the case. If you do spend a lot of time, they will show it to you. Uh, napping, sleeping habits of a budgie. Very simple. Um, it also kind of talks about how often they nap and stuff. So, yeah. Pruning and scratching. Um, it's just basic human uh, budgie behavior. Why did I say human? I don't know. But anyway. Biting and aggression. People ask me about this a lot. I'm going to be honest. A budgie is not going to just bite you for no reason. Sometimes with Kiwi when she... Because biting is different than nibbling. I think people kind of confuse the two. If a budgie bites, they have the intention of hurting you. If they're nibbling, they're playing with you. Kiwi, when she was very young, she nibbled constantly. Sometimes when they are at the nibbling stage, sometimes if they're getting a bit too rough, just let them know that it hurts and kind of ignore them. But if they are biting, most of the time, I would say almost all the time, there is a reason behind it. So have a read at that. Aggression and budgies, this could happen within their flock mates. So something that happened to me, um, especially when I added Edward into the group, uh, Kiwi was not very friendly with Edward at the beginning. Sometimes, not all the time, they might have a little bicker here and there, but for the most part, they do get along. So have a look there. If you click my blog, this is the page that you're going to end up with. Oop. Um, as you may be able to tell, May 29, 2017, in my other video, I also said that I will be uploading some sort of thing on my blog which I didn't sorry about that but yeah have a few look down below if there's something that might interest you such as feed the rainbow diet I actually very much like this page choosing the right right budgie travel carrier 
have a look at them. I do, f I have few uh, mashes, food mashes, bird mashes, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's Ray, by the way. So here is, this is something I like to do quite often, making a food mash and making it a small ball, putting it into a small ball shape and offering it to them. They actually like it. So yeah. Uh, oh, helping Kiwi with her hyperkeratosis. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I will do a video on this topic. Um, I do know some bird owners that told me that their bird has it. Um, it's a very sensitive topic. Make sure, again, you take your bird to the vet to make sure that you know what's causing it. With Kiwi, we know that what's, in her situation, hormonal reasons are what's causing her to have an excess buildup on her sear. So when you look here, it's pretty thick. Um, with a typical female budgie that has a brown sear, it's going to be flat. Whereas in Kiwi's case, it kind of protrudes outward quite obviously. Now some birds might even have them on their legs. Again, take your bird to the vet. They will do a blood work and make sure it's not certain stuff such as vitamin A. It can happen if they do have a vitamin A deficiency. So we're back to the home page. I hope you guys like this version better than my initial version, which actually I will be removing. Um, I hope my dad gets better because until then I will not be posting another video. Um, I just feel that health comes first than posting YouTube videos. That's just my personal opinion. Um, uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful day. I'm so sorry that I couldn't post often. So this is the best I could do at the moment. Um, hopefully I will be able to take a few more videos um, once dad gets better. Have a nice day, guys. Bye-bye.